You are listening to Sister Soldier Entrepreneur, the podcast for the African-American woman veteran entrepreneur of topics that are important to the transition from military into entrepreneurship. Your host is Rolanda Sumner, the visionary Sister Soldier Entrepreneur and U.S. Army veteran. everyone in this episode i'm going to do a brief brief recap of season one um and i'm also going to talk to you about season two and i'm going to break some big news about butter angels so let's get started um season one was an extension of the interviews i was doing in 2017 through butter angels And the interviews consisted of veteran spotlights and subject matter expert interviews. Um, The veteran spotlights were predominantly African-American women veteran entrepreneurs, and they were sharing their journey into entrepreneurship and how their military service had um, played a part in that. Um, And I was very blessed to speak to um, great, just a, a lot of wonderful women entrepreneurs. Um, in both see, I mean, in both the blog and the YouTube channel and in the podcast. So the podcast started one March, and I was able to speak to um, or interview a marketing expert, Jenny Hale, um, and she's the military social media marketing guru, um, and she talked to us about the FB algorithm, I mean, the Facebook algorithm and how to actually make it work for you. And she was our first subject matter expert for 2018. Then we spoke to, spoke to Donna Butler. She was the founder of Distinctive Women, and that was episode three. And she spoke to us about how she started her T-shirt business, how she started the Distinctive Women and some other business endeavors that um, she started and how the military shaped that for her. Um, In season four, I discuss how I live a full life with PTSD. And in season five, we speak with Bridget McCoy. She's our second um, time guest on the show. Um, And she talks to us about how to be a thought leader and all the things that go into that. The first time she was on the show was in the fall of 2017. And she spoke to us about the Women Veterans Social Justice Network um, and the importance of women being able to share their narrative um, on their own terms. In episode six, I spoke to Patricia um, Basin, Master Sergeant Retired Patricia Basin, and she is a childhood obesity and family fitness expert. And she talks to us about how our favorite floatist, um, Michelle Obama, had influenced her to do so um and episode seven and i think episode seven has to be one of my favorites because we speak to veteran angie hale smith and she is a va benefits expert and she dropped some really good knowledge on us about how to successfully apply for va benefits and what to do when you're turned down um episode eight we speak to lila holly for the second time And she talks to us about the book tour, and she also discussed with us um, how to write a book, a great way to write a book. I'm going to tell you right now that she, what she does is she collaborates with other um, women veterans, and they write, co-write a book together, and she walks them through the process. And when she's an award-winning author, everybody in the book is award-winning author, so we really go into that. Episode nine, I, I replay an episode um, from 2017 from our YouTube channel. I play it on um, the podcast and it's with Master Sergeant Retire Sandra Brownlee of Waypoint Griffith. She is our resident um, veteran benefits expert. She helps soldiers of all backgrounds get the benefits that they deserve. And she is going to be a veteran resources expert in our fall season two, one year sabbatical project. So I want you to stay tuned to that because I'm going to explain when that's going to release and why you should listen to it. 
episode 10, um, I briefly go over why and how you can take a one-year sabbatical from the military or once you leave out of the military um, without going broke. Um, episode 11, um, I spoke to Amanda Bushin. She is the CEO and founder of Gaia Web Studios. And we have a really good frank conversation about the importance of entrepreneurship to both her, her and I because we're mothers and we're wives. And... Um, you know how to work with a graphic designer. Episode 12 is me telling you to stop diagnosing yourself at the VA and why it's hurting you. And then episode 13, the last episode that was published last week was with um, Coast Guard veteran. She is a poet. She's also, I believe the, um, she was a former leader of a poetry sorority and she is she's a she's an award-winning poet and she talks to us about how she makes a living with her poetry how it helped her overcome a very tough time in her transition and how she helps other artists make money in poetry um in art just in art in general and the importance in art in the transition so this episode is episode uh 14 and i am that's a recap from season one. Let's talk about season two. Season two starts the last Friday of August, and it's going to go into an in-depth look on how you can successfully take one year off uh, from your military service. So once you get out of the military, how can you take a, a year off from working um, without going broke? And so we have subject matter expert um, Brandy Baxter, she's a woman veteran and she's a financial specialist. Um, she got herself out of $75,000 of debt. So she's going to tell us how she was able to do that and what you can do to financially prepare for your one year off. We're going to speak to mental health professional, um, Abini Scott. She's an award-winning author of Behind the Rank 2. And um, she's going to tell us how we can mentally get through the one year sabbatical because it's more than just taking a year off and then voila it's more than just a long vacation um this time is really going to be spent on trying to figure out what you want and um how you're going to get there and who you are as a new person and decompressing from your service and then as i mentioned before we're going to have sandra brownlee of waypoint griffin and she's gonna list out all of the wonderful benefits that we need to take advantage of as veterans. She's gonna tell us about some vet, um, some benefits that we didn't know we had available to us. And that's gonna be very important because you're gonna need that support and resources and you wanna know about all of the different benefits out there that we've earned and that we need to take advantage of. We're also gonna have an employment professional on um, and I'm still trying to book that interview. So as soon as I do book that interview, I'll let you know. But she's going to discuss with us how we can earn those high dollar jobs. Because when we leave the military, we are very capable and qualified and trained to be middle to senior management in a civilian company. However, we're not really told how we can do that. And so she's going to sit down and tell us how we can do that. Um, along with some other tips on how to make us successful. And I have a bonus episode that's going to discuss salary negotiation. This is huge for us women to learn how to negotiate our salary so that we can get paid more money and we can close that gap, that um, wealth gap. Um, and then I'm going to have a couple of other guests on um, in season two that is going to really help us with our transition while we're at the, out of the military and while we're getting out of the military so that we know what to expect and so we can heal and grow stronger. Um, so season two is going to be jam-packed full of information that you can start using today, information that's going to enlighten you, information that's going to help you be a stronger veteran um, now that you're a civilian or when you become a civilian. 
So I would, I want you to stay tuned throughout the summertime so I can, while I promote these wonderful experts that are going to be on the show and that you can start to research them and get to know them and like them. So when we publish, you are present along the way. You're going to really enjoy yourself and we're going to have a workbook to go with that so that you um, are able to follow along and take notes. So I'm really excited about that. And after we go over our, our sponsor message, I'm going to tell you the big change that Butter Angels is about to go through. It's huge, everybody. So I really want you to pay attention because there's some lessons in this. Podbean is an easy to use, all in one podcast hosting and publishing platform. Podbean offers podcasting with no limits, and all plans have robust features to help you succeed with your podcast. You can even record and publish podcasts right from your mobile phone with the Podbean app. Podbean also offers integrated monetization tools, so you can even earn revenue for the work you create. For one month free, click on the link below. Okay, so a couple of times already, I have already dropped hints about the big change that is happening with Butter Angels. Well, basically, I'm closing Butter Angels down for good. This is not a bad thing. This is really, really good. The reason I'm closing Butter Angels down for good is because I don't, I don't like it. <laughs> I know that sounds crazy. Like I put all this work and money and time into it. Um, but I had to, to look at everything and just realize that one, it wasn't viable and two, I don't like it. And then on top of that, um, I realized that my true passion was to reach out and help women veterans. And if you look at my social media, you'll notice that I almost never talk about the benefits of the skincare products or anything about the skincare products. What I talk about is women veterans and how to help them um, and how to help you and, and motivate you and such. So um, what I'm going to do is close Butter Angels and I'm going to methodically, intentionally, and deliberately plan, strategic, strategically plan um, and execute the launch of this new endeavor. Because what my heart is calling me to do, what I really believed in for a long time, even when I was getting out the military, is there should be someone out there to hand walk you through the process of entrepreneurship when you're transitioning out of the military. And there's really nobody to go to as a one-stop shop who can give you the information you need um, and to also emotionally help support you through the journey of entrepreneurship um, and understand that there's things that go into entrepreneurship that you really didn't think about and to basically walk you through it. So let me back up some. Let me talk to you about the mistakes I made in Butter Angels and how it led to the closure of Butter Angels. One, one mistake, one major mistake I did was I didn't have a real plan. I had ideas scribbled down on a piece of paper, but I didn't really know how much it was going to cost, all the work it was going to take. And I didn't realize that I was taking a hobby that I loved that kept me calm and I was forcing it into a business. Don't get me wrong. You can definitely have a hobby and make it into a business, but you have to understand that it comes with a whole nother level of activity. It's more than just making a couple of jars and making some money. There's a whole business component behind it. And to make the volume that you need to earn a living is going to require you to do a lot of work. And I initially started making skincare products because I liked it and my skin was dry and I needed something to moisturize my skin. And I decided I was going to make that into a business after lots of thought and stuff, not, lots of toying around with it. And then one day waking up and saying, this is going to happen. Um, and so 
I tried to take my hobby and force it into a business with little to no planning or realization or acknowledgement of what it really is going to cost me, what the financial cost, the emotional cost, um, the consideration that I might resent to making skincare products. Um, the second reason, the second thing that I made a mistake on is not acknowledging that I would not feel the need to help others through my business. For me, skincare is a necessity, but on a personal level, I don't really see, I don't feel like I help people in that space. I don't feel like it's a world changer. It's, that's not what it's, it is to me. It's a pleasure. It's a luxury. But it's not like a life-changing event for me. That's not to say that it's not a life-changing event for many other people. That's not to say that it's not a serious and important field of, of um, entrepreneurship or industry of work. Um, I'm not saying that at all. It's, it's a lot that goes into being to building a business to um, and being a maker, particularly if you assist on being a formulator and not a recipe follower. So with that being said, I didn't put any consideration into that. I just, I just start making stuff. And I formulated all of my products from scratch. I really enjoyed it. But then when it came time to make 100 body butters and 200 lip moisturizers and all that stuff in a short period of time, I just wasn't happy. I didn't feel like I was helping anybody because I was like, well, you know, you don't have to have this. This isn't like toilet paper. <laughs> so, um, yes, that was the second reason. I didn't feel like I was doing anything life-changing. And for me, I lose interest when I am not helpful or when I perceive that what I'm doing is not helpful. I just completely lose interest. Um, the third thing is I entered Butter Angels, hmm, I wouldn't say the wrong way, but relationship-wise, I could have done it better. So when I started my business, I just assumed my husband was going to comply. He was going to act like a soldier and comply and everybody was going to be fine. And it took like a year of just going back and forth and then having to really sit down and think of the real impact of the business, how it's affecting the family, the money and everything. And I had to go back and apologize and say, you know what, you're absolutely right. I'm gonna go back to work so we can make some money until this builds up. But then it took me even longer to realize that um, my plan wasn't viable. I just finished my business plan for Butter Angels and looked at it and was like, oh my. Had I done my business plan in the beginning, I would have had a lot more awareness of what it was going to take for me to reach my goals. And if it's something I really wanted to do. Um, I don't regret this experience of having a skincare business and not in failing at it. Honestly, I am kind of excited that I did because now I know what not to do. Um, and I'm really excited about that. To me, not knowing what not to do is just as important as knowing what to do. And with me going into this incubator um, through VWISE, um, and VWISE is a three-day inc business incubator for small business owners, veteran women small business owners, regardless if you're starting a business or if you're already in a business. Um, and it takes you literally question by question, step by step on how to build your business. Before you even go to the incubator, you have to take um, a course. And you have to get through all the course material. It's a lot of work. And in it, it makes you dig deep. Like I've only been in the coursework for a week. And I have I've had to dig deep. And on first, on day one or two of the coursework, that's when I was like, yeah, I'm not going to waste my time using Butter Angels as my model. I'm going to use um, my new business endeavor as my model to go through the course because I can really glean some insight and some mentorship and motivation and information and knowledge to help me develop a stronger business. So those are the primary reasons why I decided to close Butter Angels and start a new business.
Um, so the lesson of that story is if you're going to start a business, you need to plan it. You need to research it carefully and you need to consider all of the parties involved and how it's going to financially affect you. And if everybody's going to be on board with that, um, and be okay with failure. Like I'm totally cool that I failed at this because it really opened my eyes and the doors for something else. Now, what is my new endeavor? What is this new business? I don't have a name for it yet, but what I'm going to do is coach veterans, um, primarily women veterans, but veterans from the military and transition them into entrepreneurship. There'll be various different programs and packets and such that will help women veterans or veterans in their various stages of um, transitioning. But basically, that's what I want to do. And this is why. I am a hardcore believer that we would have less, a smaller homelessness rate amongst veterans if we talked about entrep entrepreneurship a whole lot more. In the military, they, at least in the army, but I'm almost certain it's a military as a whole, is we crawl, walk, run everything. Everything you learned, you started off doing it step by step slowly, and then you picked up the pace and you did it a little faster, and then you were, you were on a full independent run. And I think that is not brought to transitioning. In transitioning, they expect you to sprint on day one. And you don't have the transition muscle to do that successfully. On top of that, not everybody can go back into a corporate setting after getting out of the military. There's a lot of baggage that many veterans, to include myself, carry. There's a lot of things that we want to do. So the mission's first when you're in uniform and your family is second. They might be third, you know, depending on... You know, if you put God, country, God and country first, or if you put God and family first, they might be, they, they might be third. And so, at least for me and a lot of other veterans I speak to when they leave the military is they want to reassess their priorities and they really look at what is really important to them and make family in the top two. God and family or family and God, whatever works for you. Um, and it's hard to do that when you are facing mental and physical um, challenges. And when you're just having, when you're just trying to get through the new world, because it is completely different on the other side. It's, it's different on the other side of the gate, on the other side of the uniform. And now you have to learn what this, this new society is about and how to communicate in it, because there's not enough education for the civilian employer to adequately work with military, to adequately address our needs. Um, without judgment and fear and intimidation. It's just not enough. So um, I think the military grossly fails us when it comes to transitioning out into the civilian sector. They don't give you enough time to make the transition. You, ha you have to do the mission until, you know, the regulation says you literally cannot do the mission. And I think if transitioning was a year long process in which they actually walk you through, crawl, walk, run you through all the steps needed to be successful and to decompress, we would be able to have a larger percentage of people to bounce back quicker once we get on the other side of the gate. And there will be less homelessness um, and less poverty. A lot of us make really good money while we're serving to the point where we don't need two incomes. I know my family was thought like that. We didn't need two incomes. And at one time we only have one income um, due to my service. Um, I, you know, my husband needed to stay home so I can go out and deploy and do whatever else I needed to do um, to take care of the kids. And we didn't need one, we didn't need two incomes. We were good with one. But when you get out, that's not the case. And it's a shock to your ego and your system to get out of the military and make your money on one end and then you get out on the other end and you're like, oh my gosh, where's all my money? And how come I can't make the same amount of money that I did when I was once in? So that's that's a difficult. And there's a lot of other questions that go into transitioning, but that's that's one that comes to mind right now. 
So where does entrepreneurship fall into all of this? When you're going through ACAP, TAPS, Soldier for Life, or whatever the program is named, they want to talk to you mostly about getting a job, going to school, or starting a franchise. Well, if you don't want to get a regular job, you're you know, you already went to school or you don't, you're not interested in going to school and you don't want to buy a job. You don't want to buy a job and to like pay somebody to tell you what you can and cannot do with your own franchise or your business. Then you might want to start your own business from scratch. And that is highly discouraged to the point where they'll tell you, no, we're not going to talk about that. That's really difficult and you're going to fail. So we're not going to discuss that unless you have something you're already working in, walking into. We're just not going to have that conversation. Even when you go through vocational rehab, it is never introduced to you that you can go on the entrepreneur track. They almost always only introduce education or um, a traditional job. And you find out about the entrepreneur track when you go to EBV or when you go to one of these incubators or when you you're online reading um, somebody's blog article or in a Facebook group that just focus on entrepreneurship. But you have to hunt and dig for it. And by the time you go back and you ask them about it, they don't want to talk about it. It's, it's like this elusive secret. Many, don't, many of the counselors don't really know about it because so many people don't know to ask. And then there's some who don't even care to share with you. Like they have their business, but they're not going to help you get through that process. So for those service members who want to learn all of the options available to them when they transition out, that's, I want to be there to fill that void. But also I wholeheartedly believe that when you give your transitioning service member all of the options, it enables them to be stronger. So if you can't get back out into the regular workforce, you can start your own business. And it could be a strong, thriving business. Now, yes, it might take you a little longer. You might have to have like a little tiny peasy job until it boosts off the ground. But if you have somebody walking you through that process and helping you get through that process and showing you all of the resources at their disposal and emotionally providing you with support and being there for you when you need to get down to the weeds of why you can't get over this business hump or um, you know, some of the resources you need, you know, there's nobody there. There's really nobody there to help you with that type of care. There are a lot of coaches out there who will help you make your, make sure your business is strong, but there's not a lot of coaches out there. I don't know of any coaches out there who help you in the transition straight into entrepreneurship because it's just not something that's talked about in uniform. I think we can reduce the homelessness rate amongst veterans if entrepreneurship was discussed, taught, and and ingrained in our service members before they leave, regardless if they choose to take it or not. Um, Because entrepreneurship is a source of employment. And for women entrepreneurs, this is very important because we are generally the ones to balance our books and take care of our kids. And we're we're the ones who have to run off and go home to make sure the furnace is fixed and the refrigerator is replaced. And all of these different things happen, regardless of how much money we make or not, we're the ones who have to, to do that. And when you are a mother, particularly if you're a single mother, but if when you're a mother and your kids are still need you, now more than ever, whatever stage they might be in, It is hard to go to work and not get fired (laughs) for taking time off or trying to take care of your kids. It is hard to go to work when you have other mental health things going on and you're, you're bogged down with the rest of life. Owning your own business done correctly leaves you the opportunity to shape your business around your needs and your family's needs. Which is important. So if if you're having a bad day and your anxiety is getting the best of you, guess what? You can shape your business around that so that you're still making money while you're trying to recover. If your child is sickly or if they're growing up and they got sick, guess what? You get to shape your business around those occasions. And now you don't have to really ask permission to miss something, to miss work. 
you are your boss and you're like, guess what, boss? I got to take the day off because my child got the flu. There is a story behind every homeless veteran. There is a story behind every woman homeless, I mean, woman homeless veteran. It's a story. It doesn't just start off by her getting her 214 or him getting his 214 and then winding up, you know, in a shelter. There's a lot of other incidences happened between the time they got their 214 or their NGB 23 and they end up in the shelter. They might have lost their job because they were victims of MST or they were they are, um, victims of PTSD. They can't sleep. They can't eat. They can't focus. They have flashbacks that disturb them. And now their boss is like they're fired. And then they got to sleep on somebody's couch because they lost their apartment because they can't afford it. Or they have a drinking problem because they're just trying to quelch the memories, the nightmares about their service. There's a story behind that that often brings judgment, but really should bring compassion. And so, you know, say the person gets their 214, they get a regular job, they get fired from their job because they're not transitioning well. And all of a sudden, you know, not even all of a sudden, you know, they're trying to pick up these odd and end jobs until they can get a better job. They lose their house, you know, they lose their apartment. Now they got to move in with friends and family, but now the friends and family is worn out and they're like, you know what, you got to go somewhere. You can't stay here. And then they end up in the shelter. That's traumatizing. I'm going to be in very independent and emerging through financial wealth, even if it's on the smallest level, to go into object poverty. And you have to bring your kids with you too. That's rough. That's really rough. So why not introduce another way of avoiding that? Another option that says, look, I'm going to teach you how to run your own business. I'm going to show you all the resources you have at your um, fingertips. When you need to cry, call me up and you can cry on my shoulder so you can just get it out. We're going to, you know, make sure you utilize the resources for mental health if you need it. Let's see if we can connect you with somebody who can get your VA benefits in order. Let's work on all these things. You're not alone. Yes, you can find this out by yourself, but I'm going to hand walk you through this process because you need that support. Even if they choose not, the recipient chooses not to be um, an entrepreneur, having that choice and the knowledge that you can work that choice successfully makes all the difference. So you start your own business and you can take care of yourself now. And at first you might have to work a little, you know, a little job to help supplement your income while you start this business, but you are now equipped to do it correctly. So when you quit your job, or if you get fired, you still have something to fall back on, which means you are further away from homelessness. So that's why I'm starting this new endeavor. I know it was really winded and long to talk, like listen to, but I'm so passionate about entrepreneurship because I personally, I, I want the freedom. I need the freedom of entrepreneurship. I, am, I don't want to ask anybody you know, I hate asking people, oh, can, or supervisors or anybody, can I take time off because my child is sick or she's getting bullied or something, anything. I want to be able to take the time off that I need and take care of my family the way I need to and take care of myself. I don't know how many days I went to work and I just wasn't right. I couldn't be there. I had to stay there because I didn't have any time left. But I had to be there. There was no choice. But what gave me some solace is this is temporary. Eventually, I'm going to have my own. I do have my own business, but eventually my business is going to be profitable enough for me not to have to ask anybody if I can take care of myself. So that is the big news about Butter Angels. It is closing so I can start a coaching practice that will help veterans, particularly women veterans. Um, transition from the military into entrepreneurship with a hands-on crawl, walk, run type of feeling and providing a great deal of support. So stay tuned because this summer I will have quite a bit more um, solo episodes um, because 
yeah, I'll have a, quite a bit more of solo episodes because season two, we are going to have a lot of in-depth information on how to successfully take one year off after your service and what to do, how to um, transition or how to negotiate your salary so that you can be paid more so you can close up this wealth gap and other extremely helpful tips on um, how to transition well. But for the most part, in the summertime, you're going to help hear me talk by myself a lot. So if you have any topics you want me to cover, please put them in the comments. And I look forward to speaking to you next Friday. Thank you for listening to Sister Soldier Entrepreneur, the podcast for the African-American woman veteran entrepreneur, which covers topics and subject matter important to the transition from military into entrepreneurship. If you would like to be a guest on Sister Soldier Entrepreneur, please visit SisterSoldierEntrepreneur.com and click on Guest Blogger Interview Me. If you have specific topics you would like us to address, questions you would like me to answer, please list them in the comments below. And as always, we look forward to speaking with you next week on Friday at midnight Eastern Standard Time. Thank you, and I look forward to speaking to you then.